I want to end this war. The American people want to end this war. The people of South Vietnam want to end this war. And yet the fighting goes on. The destruction continues. Brave men still die. The time has come. Anthony John Salerno was born to Mary and Anthony Salerno in the city of New Rochelle, New York, located just 20 miles from New York City. Soon after he was born, the Salerno family relocated to Cinnaminson in New Jersey. This is where Anthony grew up, attended school, and made lots of friends. Anthony, or Tony as his friends and family knew him, was a boy of many talents. He loved to lift weights and play sports, and as his younger brother John remembers, he was an avid bodybuilder. In fact, he would pick me up uh, when I was, you know, six, seven years old, and he would lift me over his head. In addition to his physical abilities, Tony was also a talented singer. He was a big fan of Frank Sinatra and tried to emulate his style, singing along to songs such as this one from the 1950s. In 1965, while a senior at Palmyra High School near Cinnaminson, Tony was invited to sing at the New York World's Fair. This great honor should have been no surprise to those who knew him, as he was voted most talented in his graduating class of 1966, and as his brother will tell you, He sang every chance he could get, and he was incredibly gifted. He uh, ultimately got a voice coach from Philadelphia. He was a joker, which I, I never knew. This, comedy side to him, but I, 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 over the years, learned all these stories from his high school classmates about how funny he was. He was just that guy that had everything going for him. I've never heard, never heard a bad word spoken about him. Everybody loved him. Almost immediately after graduating from Palmyra in 1966, Anthony enlisted in the Marine Corps as an infantryman. He was a sworn peacemaker, never itching to start a fight or to hurt anybody, and he thought his mission in Vietnam would be a peaceful and democratic one. His father had previously been in the military, and so that may have encouraged him in his decision. few months of basic Marine Corps training, Anthony was deployed to South Vietnam and assigned to the Mike Company of the 3rd Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, 1st Marine Division, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. In this company, he served as the machine gunner, carrying, among other things, an M60 machine gun and an M67 recoilless rocket launcher. The photographs of Tony shown here are from a letter he wrote to his family after he started his tour in Vietnam. In fact, he often exchanged letters with his parents and his brothers Ralph, Mike, and John to share stories and to hear news from back home. On May 26, 1967, the United States launched a search and destroy mission in the Quezon Valley known as Operation Union 2. This put Mike Company in the Quang Tinh province, where they found and attacked the North Vietnamese Army unit that they were searching for. They fought through the morning and through the afternoon until it was determined that the enemy was neutralized. On the American side, 38 casualties were counted. Mike Company had been struck directly by an enemy mortar round, killing Anthony and six of his fellow company men. On the very day that the operation began, Anthony John Salerno was killed by the North Vietnamese Army. He had only started his tour nine months earlier. My brother was standing in the driveway, and he, uh, he got me before I went into the house. I was 14 at the time, and he knew how much Anthony meant to me, and um, so he told me, and that was the first time I ever saw my dad cry, and um, it was just, just that horrible moment that, um, you know, you never forget. Anthony was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart Medal for his bravery and dedication to his country, which ultimately led to his unfortunate death. He was buried in Holy Sepulchre Cemetery in New Rochelle, New York. His mother, Mary, now lives in Florida with his brother, Mike, and is the oldest Gold Star mother in the state at 97 years old. In the years since Tony died, his friends and family have gotten together each year to commemorate the anniversary of his death. In 2017, over 30 people gathered for the 50th anniversary. 
It certainly speaks in great measure to the positive impact he had on his friends, his family, and his acquaintances. It was always easy to see, for those who knew him, that Tony was an amazing guy. A great soldier, a great son, a great brother, and a wonderful friend to all. Anthony's name lives on through his mother, his brothers, his friends, his hometown, and through the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., where it can be found on line 124 of panel 20E. No matter how many years it's been since Tony died, he will always remain someone who is looked up to, loved, and remembered by all.